What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Last time you saw me and Chris install this, these battery packs, get them all wired up, and get the wheel spinning on the Tesla Drive unit. But that is not everything that has to be done. This battery pack has to power all of our 12 volt stuff, like an alternator, 14 volt. Also has to recharge itself as well. Plus there's a lot of odds and ends, and we gotta get our 12 volt fuse box and relay all wired into all of our accessory components. So that's what we'll be doing on this episode. And next up, we have our fuse box for all of our low voltage systems. So this is going to be the cooling fans, the vacuum pump, the electric water pumps. So I have a bunch of relays and fuses here, some wire equipment, some terminals. And what I am going to do is start to populate all of these fields. This is the fuses, this is the relays. And thanks to modern computer technology, this is what I really love about new technology. It's called a spreadsheet. So here I have my relay number, my pin, my connection, and then everything labeled. I did this so I could think about all the circuits here. That way when I'm building this, I don't have to constantly be like, what's that gonna go to? That way uh, the box will look a lot neater in the end because I'll know all my connections and plan them ahead of time. Um, so I'm gonna start with the easy stuff. I'm gonna do all the grounds. Most of these relays are gonna have a positive trigger. So all the grounds will go to one ground stud, except for two, I think, that are gonna be ground triggered. And those will get powered by a constant power. So I'm gonna build all my grounds that have a constant ground to the ground stud. That way we can bring up one fat ground wire from the bottom. That'll be tied into the rest of the car grounds and that'll feed all of our relays. So that's where we'll start and then we'll just go down the list from there and start populating anything that could be wired in before we put this into the car. All right, we've got our coolant system all bled. You see here, we backfilled our reservoir. We filled up through our fill tube up here, the highest point in the system. And we ran the electric pump while filling. Saw the bubbles gurgle out and we checked the leaks. So we are all good on that. While that was happening, we got a package in the mail. And finally got the proper high voltage wiring. As you can see, there's the big one for the drive unit and the batteries. This is what when you plug into the AC charging, will connect DC voltage out of the charger into the pack and charge it when you plug in at 220 or 110 volts. So we need to make this connection here on the back between that and the charger. And then this will also feed our air conditioning compressor as well with 400 volts high voltage. So I'm gonna measure out length between here and the pack, get that all made up. And once I have that length, I can cut this down and start crimping. We've got our connector here and all of our little bits that go inside it. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, since the charger and the AC both go into the same connector, I'm gonna make my cabling at the same time. I'll label them charger, air conditioning, put negative here, just in case that gets smudged. So I know which my negatives and my positives. According to this little diagram here, it says negative top, positive bottom. So all of our negatives are gonna go up here. That's two of them. And all of our positives are gonna go down here. And we got our associated pins that will fit. This is the air conditioning side connector here. We'll worry about that later. And these are all of our little sleeves and doodads. So I'm gonna start by slipping this onto all four of our cables in the proper up and down. This thing has a cutout, so it only goes in one way. So I gotta make sure that all the negatives go next to the cutout at the top of the connector, all the positives at the bottom. And then we'll start cutting back and 
putting our little sleeves onto here. And finally, we could crimp our fittings, slide them into the slots, and be ready to go. Okay, we've got our HV connections between our charger and the battery, and then from the battery to the air conditioning. Now that that's done, we had already primed our battery coolant, but next we gotta prime our Tesla slide coolant. So I got here our, it says it on there, Tesla blue stuff. So we're gonna do the same process. I got my leader hose up here. We'll take this cap off all the way that way air can escape. We'll put our funnel in there, fill it up, and then run our pump and the whole system will poop, push up air out of, out of this, this way. So once we get this full, just like this one, we'll be able to uh, close our ball valve that leads to that and everything will be ready to go. All right, so we finished hooking up everything and testing out our DC-DC converter. Now we're going to test out our charging. So we got to pull the car from here up there because our charger is mounted right outside the bay door. So let's uh, fire this up, get it in position. indicator about our system so far and there's an LED light in the trunk that shows us if everything's okay or fault codes. So we'll have to rely on that for now. It's J1772 plug. See our port here. And our little LED shows green. And our charger over here is blinking which means on, and I actually have the app for the auto, so we might be able to see some information, I'm not sure. Okay, there we go. It looks like charging is happening. 0 0.0531 kilowatts of energy has entered in the past 43 seconds. So I think it's going. All right, so now that we know that this is charging, we're gonna roll to a fast charger, plug in. Down here, our empty ports are for our DC fast charging. We're gonna see if we could charge super fast. Okay. All right, so we are running and driving on our way to the fast charger. Uh, as you can see here, I don't have any instrument controls yet. I'm still building up my, uh, my new gauge control in the cluster. Uh, I know that everything works from the previous uh, iteration of this system. So I know a lot of people have been commenting about like, oh, why are you swapping batteries? That EV batteries go bad so fast. Why do you need new ones? Well, my EV batteries, the old ones are just fine. Chevy Volt batteries, but they aren't very energy dense. So I really wanted to build this car so I could travel more than 80 miles at a time. Also, you know, I got those packs out of a salvage vehicle along with a bunch of the other components. And that was, you know, a first build as cheap as possible. Just wanted the proof of concept and within the budget that I had at the time. So this new battery pack isn't because of any sort of battery failure. So yeah, really it was more about my range. You know, every time you build something you want, more the next step, right? Even if it's a gas motor, you want more horsepower, bolt on, etc. So this is just the, the next iteration. So yeah, a lot of people are saying, you know, you took out the most reliable motor in the world, which I'm not in disagreeance with. Uh, I love 
the uh, inline five cylinder three liter diesel motor. But, you know, I have plenty of other diesel vehicles and, you know, that, that motor non-turbo is just not super exciting to drive and I thought this would be a great project. But as far as like reliability, I've owned a bunch of 300Ds in the winter. I used to live up north. And uh, yeah, reliability, I think this thing has been way, way more reliable than you get one, two glow plugs out, you're not gonna be starting if it's under 32 degrees up north. So yeah, I built this in 2020 and have been driving it for four years. I get in and it starts every time. Yeah, as far as all the naysayers go, sure it's not, uh, you know, uh, a non-electronic motor that will just run forever, but you know, I have applications for that too, and this is not one of them, but uh, I think as far as getting in and starting it, you know, just as reliable, if not more, than the original diesel. Our first attempt at fast charging was unsuccessful. Uh, I'm sure it just has to do with something with the CCS software in the battery pack talking to our Electrify America charger. We're going to have to get Chris on the horn to sort that out. Unfortunately, since he's across the pond, uh, we got to set up a time for that so you won't see that today. For now, we're just going to pull this guy out. All right, well, that was unfortunate. We didn't get to do our fast charging today, but uh, we're going to sort it out and we'll be fast charging in no time. At least we can uh, do our regular 220 volt charging so we get this battery pack loaded up and then I can drive this home out of the shop and uh, get prepared for the next mods. Okay, we're off. All right, so our next steps, we're gonna be getting the CCS charging working. Uh, we're gonna be getting our cluster all together with our new gauges. That way we can have some nice visuals for the way all this wiring mess as well. And then we're gonna be tackling our air rod system in this thing. It's gonna be pretty sweet. We got all the components already, but we gotta finish one project at a time. So that'll happen next time. Be sure to like, subscribe, that way you can keep up on this build and see it to its finality. Peace.